Welcome to T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball. Another pretty evening in our nation's capital. Always good to be in Washington, do a little sightseeing, watch a little hardball. That's what we're about to do this evening as the Rockies are set to take on the Nationals in game two of this three-game set. Washington won last night 7-3. to three. Rockies had a short-lived 2-1 to one lead in yesterday's ball game. Welcome upstairs, everybody, and welcome inside Nationals Park. A little bit of a dinner. The United States in a, in a great match loss to Belgium 2-1, to one, if, you, if you missed that. Well, a lot of people here at the ballpark, including the players, they were riveted to the big board out there. The interest in batting practice wasn't as strong today. Even for the players, everybody <laughs> was staring at that big board. A little more on that later on. Well, last night the Rockies fell 7-3. to three. The bullpen didn't hold up. And we talk about our starting matchup tonight. The Rockies are going to see another tough right-hander in Steven Strasburg. Christian Friedrich will get his third start this year. Well, it is going to be a tough matchup because the, the Nationals have the lowest ERA as far as a team in all of baseball. So it's going to be up to Christian Friedrich to try to go out there and kind of put the first two starts out of his mind because he got the ball elevated this first two uh, appearances against the Brewers. Now, he was facing an all-right-handed lineup, so that hurt him. But when he was able to get that slider down in the zone, he, was, he got some strikeouts, he got some swing and misses, but just were just too few and far between. So Christian needs to do a little bit better tonight as far as that goes. But Steven Strasburg, we, we know about this guy. Yeah, he's coming off a poor performance, though, against Milwaukee, where he gave up a couple home runs, seven earned runs. Scooter Jeanette with the grand slam for the Brewers. Seven earned runs for Strasburg. That ties a, a career high for him. But he also strikes out a lot of guys. And it usually comes with the changeup. Well, it's an outstanding changeup. The stuff is still among the best pitchers in baseball. He's not 97 to 100 anymore. He can go get 97 if he wants. He pitches in the mid-90s. Listen, he's still outstanding despite what happened in Milwaukee. A tough chore for the Rockies tonight. He's not a thrower anymore because after Tommy John, he lost a couple miles an hour, but he knows how to pitch. And the Rockies have to just find a way to grind out a victory tonight. Again, game two of this three-game set in our nation's capital. We are ready for baseball. It's the Rockies and Nationals. Come on back to Washington with us.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Inova Cancer Care, advanced non-surgical treatment of prostate cancer in only five sessions. Visit InovaCC.com. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at Southwest.com. A lot of folks out and about on a beautiful summer day in Washington, D.C. Rockies have historically played very well here at Nationals Park. They've won 14 of 21 ball games since Nationals Park opened a few years back. In fact, last year was the first year in several years the Rockies did not win the season series against the Nats. They fell four games to three. Steven Strasburg jogs to the mound. There are a bunch of little folks out there, though, taking ground balls right now. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll be replaced. Well... They'd like to stay out there with the bigger guys, but I don't know if that's allowed. Corey Dickerson's going to lead things off for the Rockies tonight. Charlie Blackman being given uh, the night off. Corey's hitting 345. Walt's lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. In fact, Troy Tulowitzki is also being given a day off. Josh Rutledge will bat second. Justin Morneau had three hits last night. Will bat third. Drew Stubbs for the first time this year will bat in the cleanup spot. Then Willeen Rosario, Ryan Wheeler, Brandon Barnes in right field will hit seven. DJ LeMahieu swinging the bat well. And then Christian Friedrich. Now Steven Strasburg out of San Diego State making his 18th start of the year. His numbers are brought to you by Inova Cancer Care. Painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer. Visit InovaCC.com. Huey? Well, that's kind of unusual to see Strasburg after 17 games sitting at a 6-6 six and six record with a 3-7 ERA. But it's been because that pitch count has been elevated for Strasburg. A lot of strikeouts, 123 and 104 and two-thirds innings. That's good, but that causes him to throw a lot of pitches in a short amount of innings. Since 2012, only one guy has had more strikeouts during that time, and it's a guy that the Rockies are quite familiar with, and that's Clayton Kershaw. But 511 strikeouts since 2012 for Strasburg. That is a bunch. Here are the gloves behind Steven Strasburg. They had the same lineup as last night. Not surprising. Matt Williams had his opening day lineup for seven innings this year. So now that he's got him together again, he wants to run him out there. Harper in left, uh, not pleased with playing left field. More on that a little bit <laughs> later on. Denard Span in center. Jason Worth in right. Zimmerman, Desmond left side. Rendon's got really good hands. Adam LaRoche has won a gold glove in his past. And Wilson Ramos is behind the dish. So we're ready for baseball. There's uh, Harper who caused uh, some waves this morning with some of the things he said last night after the ball game. And Matt Williams, I thought, handled it great. Basically, well, after the game last night, Bryce Harper was asked about hitting sixth. And instead of saying, I'll hit wherever the manager wants me to, and as you should be, privately, you may not be happy hitting sixth, but he said, yeah, I wouldn't be hitting there if it was up to me. And I, I would have Ryan Zimmerman in left field. And intimated that he'd be in center field. So, how do you like that if you're Denard Span? Yeah, not too much. You'd be better off if you said, you feel that way, but don't voice it. Or come to me first and tell me. But as a teammate, I wouldn't like to see that in the paper for sure. One and one on Corey Dickerson. We'll show you the exact quote. That's in side two and one. So in uh, Today's Washington Times. I think Ryan Zimmerman should be playing left. Rendon's a great third baseman. He should play third. We've got one of the best second basemen in the league in Danny Espinosa. Of course, you want the best hitting lineup in there, and I think Rendon playing third and Zim playing left is something that's good for this team, and I think that should be what's happening. Well, what, what anybody would say privately is you're 21, and I'm the manager. What Matt Williams came out publicly and said, hey, he's a competitive guy. I've got his back. It's all good. We want him in the lineup every night because, he, you know, uh, I'm paraphrasing now, makes such a huge impact. Good for Matt Williams on how he handled it. But as you said, Huey, that, that couldn't have played well in the locker room. No, and that's where you get the disruption and the, and the chemistry issues when you're talking about a ball club because that, that obviously has to hurt Denard Span. 
and his ability to go out there tonight and just say, hey, I got a guy to my right that doesn't want me to be out here. And he had a, he's coming off a really good June right. also. I mean, he's got 31 extra base hits from the leadoff spot. This ball is fouled off by Dickerson. It's a, a three and two count. We saw the last fastball from Strasburg at 94. As you mentioned a few moments ago in our open, it used to be 96, 97, could touch 100. But he's trying to dial it back, but his changeup is his go to pitch. It's one he likes to throw for the strikeouts. This is in play. Span coming on. Harper and Denard Span will make the catch one out. That'll bring up Josh Rutledge for the Rockies. Rutledge came off the bench as a pinch hitter last night, 0 for 1. 4 for 10 on the road trip. Rockies just 1 and 4 on this trip. But what's interesting is that. They're hitting 306. Four games in Milwaukee, one here in Washington. 306 out on the road. You got to love that. As we all know, the problem has been holding the other team down. As the pitchers finish the month of June with an ERA north of seven. And the only guy on the road trip that's allowed fewer than four earned runs, and that's Tyler Matzik, tomorrow's starter. And the Christian Friedrich in his start against. Of Milwaukee, he gave up five earned runs. Just seen seven earned runs. Even De La Rosa on Sunday gave up four earned runs. One ball, two strikes. And that's strike three. Fastball at 94 on the inside corner. Marty Foster calls out Rutledge, two gone. Last pitch, 94 mile an hour fastball dotted on the corner, down and in for a strikeout. And this is not unusual for Steven Strasburg. He averages just under 11 strikeouts or 10 and a half strikeouts per nine innings. And he's number one in the league in. As you see in strikeouts per nine innings he's number one in the league in total strikeouts that was his 124th and he's walked only 23 that ratio is second in the National League it's 5.4 to one strikeouts to walk usually when you think of a power pitcher you're thinking okay I'll, I'll, I see the strikeouts are up but the walk should be you know up to 50 or 60 walks but he's at 23 well anything above Two to one, you, you know, you like that ratio. Even if you're not a big strikeout guy, the ratio ought to be in that neighborhood. Now, a big power pitcher who punches out a lot of guys like a Strasburg will have an even better ratio as long as he's not walking guys. Like Nolan Ryan never had your old friend and, and great teammate. Never had that kind of ratio because he never had the command. I mean, he struck everybody out, right. but he walked guys too. This ball's fouled off by Morneau. I think one of the no hitters you played behind him, correct me if I'm wrong, he, he walked six or eight in that game. I think it was six. Six in that ball game. Yeah, and that's not unusual for a power pitch. I just I remember Randy Johnson was that way early in his career until Nolan talked to him Ooh. about it when, he, when, when Randy's with Seattle. In a bullpen session together. 2 2. This is popped up. Ramos hoping for a play. Will not have one. Well, Ubaldo, when he threw the no hitter down in Atlanta, he was having trouble out of the windup, pitched out of the stretch the last several innings, and ended up walking six in the game. And that just tells you how, when you have a powerful arm and you can throw it, you're just hoping sometimes that it's, it's close to the zone. Especially with Ubaldo, he had so much movement at 95 plus. Here's the 2 2. And this is down the right field line. Worth may have a play on this. Nope. 
So Morneau stays alive. Who wants tacos? Remember when the Rockies score seven or more during any game? Go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Three more hits for Morneau last night. Here's the 3 2, and he wastes that one, kept his head right on it. Three hits last night for Morneau. The first one back off of Zimmerman. Another hit back up the middle. He just spraying the ball all around, taking what pitches they give him and hitting him in that direction. Hit six straight. He has had a tremendous year. And he'll add on right here, make it seven straight on the single to right field. That's a Just great at bat. The, well, the at bat, and, and then also the aggressive turn at first base, not just settling for a, a, a single. Elevates the hands the, the high pitch into a left hander is one of the most difficult to get to. And you have to make sure you keep your body upright. You can't collapse the back leg to get to that baseball. It was an elevated changeup. So now Drew Stubbs who's. Hitting the leadoff spot the two hole starts. In the four hole tonight he's also had starts in the five hole the six hole the seven hole so the only place. Look. is. That he has not started a game this year. Is the three spot and the eight spot. I'm eliminating the nine hole. So it's nice to have that versatility for, yeah. for, for Walt. Well, he's, he's he's got a lot of pop, but he's also one of the fastest guys in baseball. And this that's reminds commodity. Me, yeah, but this at bat right now reminds me of what happened to him last night in his first at bat. Two pitches and balls. Two balls that are called strike, and you're sitting in the ditch. 0-2. Got him on a curveball. In the inning, more no singles. He's left at first base. Christian Friedrich to the mound when we return to Washington. On a humid night in D.C., there's Span. He's hitting 265. 
13 stolen bases caught only twice. You want to keep him off base naturally. Here's Matt Williams Southwest batting order. Anthony Rendon will bat second. Jason Worth, the veteran, will be in the three spot. Adam LaRoche, who homered last night, will bat cleanup. Ryan Zimmerman. Bryce Harper returned with a base hit and an RBI yesterday. Ian Desmond was two for four last night, a career 346 hitter against the Rockies. Wilson Ramos and Steven Strasburg. Let's take a look at the first two ball games. The numbers on Christian Friedrich presented by Inova Cancer Care, painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer, InovaCC.com. Well, obviously not what Christian would like when you're sitting at 0-2 with an 8 ERA. He has faced Washington before in his career. That was back on June 26, 2012. Four and a third inning, set three strikeouts in that game. Just talking to Walt that today, he said Christian needs to get the ball down in the zone. Too many pitches have been left up. That's something he's really going to focus on in this outing tonight. His first two are against Milwaukee, an all left handed lineup. Tonight, three left handers in for Washington. And that catches the corner. One ball, one strike. We'll see how he does in keeping that ball down consistently. Good location there. Span fouls it off. It's one and two. Well, it's a good start. And you also have to get help from the catcher where he has to set a nice low target for you. So that focus and trains your eyes differently. So you see it down. You want to finish out in front. Now, almost like you're reaching for him. Get out, out over that front leg and don't be, uh, have a stiff back when you throw it. Two balls, two strikes on Span. Nats are 24 and 17 at home. And wow. that looked like the pitch that was called a strike on the second pitch from Friedrich. Check the Ford strike zone. See where this ended up. Oh, just a little bit further off the plate. Good job of receiving it, it, it that. Very quiet. Where he he pulled it back, but it wasn't a just grab it and then pull it hard back into the zone, just very subtly. This is a night where Rosario and Ramos probably lose seven, eight pounds. Well, and they'll keep an eye on them. Both both dugouts will. Both trainers. They'll wait. Sometimes they'll weigh the guys before the game and then weigh them again after to see how much weight they lost so they can make sure they replenish the fluids properly. And that wasn't close, a leadoff walk. So Span with the good speed at first base. Anthony Rendon coming up. Defense for the Rockies brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more. Drew Stubbs will play in the middle of Dickerson and Barnes in the outfield. Wheeler, as we've discussed, had a good road trip uh, defensively. Josh Rutledge for Tulowitzki is short. Again, if you missed the lineup on the offensive side, Tulo's fine, just getting a day off. Same thing with Charlie Blackman. Span 13 out of 15 swiping bases. Outside on Rendon. Anthony's got some thunder in the bat. He's hit a dozen home runs in a ballpark where if you hit it out, you've earned it. Down the line, it's 336 to left field. Right field, it's 335. The one short area, if there is one, is to right center field. There's a little bit of a jet stream that works out to the auxiliary scoreboard that they have. But, 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 this, but the wall's twice as high. Yeah, there. 
but this is the area out out in this towards right center. Snap throw, but Span clearly got back. Two balls and a strike. Show you the dimensions. The dimensions. Yeah, yeah and the, the wall, especially in left field, jets out and then it comes back, and it's real uh, unique in the way that it's configured. See if they start span. Not going. Three one is outside. Now Friedrich has created a problem for himself. He's walked the first two guys he's faced. Causing some anxious moments for Jimmy Wright. You, you, you do everything down in the bullpen. It feels good. You're, you're looking at it. And you walk out. Walk the first two guys. Been said for more than a century. You can't defend the walk. One immediately put the defense on their heels. Jason Worth. 0 for 3 in a walk last night. That's in there. Here's a little known fact about Jason Worth as Rosario goes out to the mound. He owns the second best stolen base percentage among active players. He has 119 bags in his career. Do you know he's only been caught 17 times? No, I hadn't. And you look at his body and you're thinking, well, this big guy, he's, he's just a lumberer. He can't go. So you don't pay attention to him, but he's smart in the way he goes about doing it at an 875 clip. It's actually slipped to third recently. We'll show you the graphic. Mike Trout has moved in front of him. Imagine well, that. Yeah, a guy you would expect. Chase Utley earlier before he had the knee problems was stealing at a regular basis. Same with Carlos Beltran. Jared Dyson. Yeah, he runs really yeah. well. Here's He's the, the guy one you one. would expect. Yep. That ball's uh, loud and foul. The slider has been the best pitch for Christian. See if he can get a ground ball. He did, but it was smoked past Wheeler down the line. Span will score into that corner and a green light now for Rendon. He'll score. And I'm sure they'll mark that as a double. Two nothing Washington. Walks just kill you. Yep. That ball was hit hard. You only hope if you're Ryan Wheeler is to catch it on the pick and turn it into a double play. All right. Hung in the zone. That ball's tattooed and it was 
a bad hop over the glove of Wheeler. I mean, be, before he got his glove up, it was by him, and then it stuck under the padding in left field. Two run double for Worth, nobody out, and Adam LaRoche at the plate. Off the plate, ball one. That double from Jason Ward just extends what they were doing last night. Five for nine of the hits for Washington were extra base hits. Rolled up the middle. DJ, trouble getting it out of his glove. Safe at first is LaRoche. That'll be an infield hit. And it's first and third. Still nobody out. Ryan Zimmerman coming up. DJ playing LaRoche to pull. That's what he normally does. But when you have to reach so far like DJ did with your momentum going towards the outfield, sometimes when you go to make the transfer, the ball stopped to start to drop on you. And that's what it did for DJ, and he didn't have the grip. So wisely double clutch to make the throw. Because if you don't have that grip, you can airmail throw it into the stands. That's a run score, and they run her attack at base. Fifth inning is when we do Toyota Talk. Here's how you get yourself involved. Tweet your question using the hashtag Toyota Talk. And we'll answer as many questions as we can during that inning. Ryan Zimmerman. Last night was three for four, including a couple of doubles. He drove in a run and scored twice. And strike one. Well, sliding back to third base did not hurt Ryan Zimmerman last night. Didn't, hurt, didn't hurt his offense. Uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about because it, sometimes that'll play with the player's mind. In fact, it was one of the better games he's had in a while offensively. He'll be a national. Through 2019. Unless of course he gets moved. Not quite a 10 and 5 status. He's a guy they earmarked early on to build around Huey and perfect guy to do that. He's good in the community. Uh, he, he's an East Coast guy. He's Not that that matters, but from oh, this but part of the country. Yeah, down in the Virginia area. So yeah. it's just right down the road. First round selection of the Nationals in 2005. He was a great player. Is a good hitter now still. Yeah, he was a great two-way player at one point until the arm issues. Two and two. It's amazing how they've improved their roster. They had... They were very, very fortunate in that in two historic drafts, they had the number one pick because they weren't winning a lot of games. Yeah, and Mike Rizzo was able to, to go get uh, Steven Strasburg, and the very next year, he got Bryce Harper. And, and those are generational type talent. And that was the first time that a ball club had had back to back first picks overall. Of course now Houston a couple years later they take it for three years in a row but prior to that Washington that was the first time it had ever happened in the draft. And you have two premier no doubters yeah, guys the, that are going to go first no matter who had the pick. That's right. Nobody was going to equivocate no. who, who the number one pick was. It was so clearly Strasburg and so clearly Bryce Harper in his year near the wall the catch is made and it'll work as a sack fly as Worth scores Zimmerman with his 21st RBI it's three nothing here in the first national. Brandon knew 
how much room he had because yesterday when they came out for early batting practice, he was playing balls off the wall. He was counting the steps from the foul line once he hit the dirt over to the wall. So he knew where he was in an unfamiliar ballpark. And Bryce Harper takes inside ball one. You know, so you add Strasburg very quickly and Bryce Harper very quickly to a mix that had included Ryan Zimmerman. They drafted Ian Desmond, and, and Desmond has blossomed into a very good shortstop, an offensive shortstop also. This ball Ooh. slammed foul. Ooh. Tony Tarasco had to duck. <laughs> Well, and then they went out and made some trade sites some free agents Gio Gonzalez to help bolster the pitching staff they increased their payroll they, they increased it quite a bit two years ago in fact they were 20th in payroll and now they're ninth at 134 million roughly and two years ago as you referenced they were at 81 million and that is foul also. One of the free agents they signed was Adam LaRoche, the other being Jason Worth in, in terms of offensive players. And then Jordan Zimmerman emerged. Yeah, and then he comes back from Tommy John. So they had three healthy number one style pitchers. We were talking about Gonzalez and Strasburg and Jordan Zimmerman. Jordan Zimmerman was a second round pick in 07. And here's what they've done with their payroll. And, you know, they're a big market team. They generate a good deal of income being here in D.C. So they've gone from 63 million to more than doubling it over the last few years. Rockies raised their payroll considerably from last year to this year in the mid 90s. Two and two on Harper. It's been a long inning already for Christian. Three runs on two hits, a couple of walks. And it's three and two. Just tell by the the way the guys are taking pitches, some of the swings that they're picking up the ball quickly out of the hand of Christian. And the ones that are off the forward strike zone, they come out of the hand not even looking like a strike. Wow. You know, we've seen. That, that's a fastball. You know, you, you'd think Huey would be an off-speed pitch the way he's turned on. So balls that would that was a fastball that he turned on. It's like the one worth hit down the left field line in the second deck fastball in. see the hips clear to get the hands through there. And now you put your scout hat on you see the kind of bat speed he has and you, you're fumbling all over yourself to, to pick out you pick up your cell phone and say I got somebody here. right. That's why he was went to high school or college early great pitch big curveball and Friedrich strikes out Harper clearly his best delivery of this first inning that had a lot well, of drop to it heavy 12 to 6 action we talk about the hips from Bryce Harper so they'll just leave early see the belt buckle I mean it's already turned before that pitch gets to the hitting zone. Here's Ian Desmond. That's on the corner for a strike. Desmond back in 04 was a third round pick of the Nationals out of Sarasota, Florida. He's the last guy remaining who was actually drafted when the Nationals were the Montreal Expos.
takes a walk. He's in a hole 0 and 2. Two outs, three runs in. LaRoche at first base. And the two strike count on Ian Desmond. Back in 2004. I don't believe it's 10 years ago. Crazy. Thirty two pitch first inning. A couple of exhibition games up in Montreal this spring where they drew 90,000. I didn't realize that. Is that correct? Yep. That's, that has to warm your heart a little yeah, bit. Of former Expo. Yeah, it does. And it's a lot muggier tonight than Isn't it was it? last night. You and I were talking about that on the way over today. You just feel it almost cut it with a knife. The humidity and. Yeah, use the. Use those as fans. She's got to work the fan the other way though. Swung on and missed. It was not a foul tip. So they'll go to first. Desmond is out in the inning. Two walks and then a double by Worth, and eventually a sack fly by Zimmerman produces three runs for the Nats. Three nothing as we go to the second. As we go to the second frame, it's time for you to tweet us your Rockies fan photos. Use the hashtag seal fan photo. It's brought to you by AT&T. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, and Mark Stout from Nationals Park. A lot of fans out. Fans who have fans <laughs> in their hands. Willene Rosario batting fifth tonight. He'll come to the plate against Steven Strasburg, Ryan Wheeler, and then Brandon Barnes. Rosario saying hello to Wilson Ramos. That's a, a tight knit fraternity, catchers in the big leagues. Customary to do that between catchers. And a line shot to right. I like Willene's approach there. <laughs> Get that fastball, fire at it. He's had trouble with well, things spinning this year. And also to show that you can hit that ball that's on the outside third. Take it the other way and then eventually they'll get the ball back inside. And then you can hit the home run. But see that ball was up and center cut. Stays with it and hits it to right. That'll bring up Ryan Wheeler. Down and in on Wheeler. He's had a good road trip. Five for 18. Five driven in. Four and one swing. That grand slam in Milwaukee. Last night he drove in a run with a sack fly to shallow center. Tulowitzki a daring sprint down the third base line. 
gave the Rockies a two to one lead in the sixth inning in the bottom half unfortunately Washington would score five times. Well the Rockies are in a stretch of playing 20 straight days before their next day off you have to give the players a, a, a break. And they're playing days off and. And there's also the uh, watchful eye or eyes I should. Put it of Keith Duggar and. Scotty Garrett and they're just watching how guys move to see if they're out of gas or on. Fumes as they sometimes say in. In baseball well, because with, the players never going to ask out no and with the humidity here too. That's the other factor. This is a line shot right to Desmond. That was a quab. Goodwood A B. One out. I call him a hang with him. People will say, oh, good swing. Nice. Way to go. And you say, yeah, I appreciate all of that. Hey. But I'll rather, I would rather take the hit. I know you would, but this is what you have taught your kids. It's what I teach mine process. Process was good. The result wasn't <laughs> what you wanted. The process True. was right on. Them. True. So Wheeler so will put Wheeler, his equipment yes. away. He's saying that the process was a good against Strasburg. Next time I, I'll get the hit. Brandon Barnes. I'll tell you a story, story uh, about Brandon Barnes. You may not know. Through high school and into junior college, he was a switch hitter. And he's, he feels like he was a better hitter lefty. But when he got to pro ball they wanted him to hit just right handed because he had more pop right handed. Remember we were talking about that with Carlos Gomez. In Milwaukee. Same thing. And he was working on his left handed swing but they changed him and, and just wanted him to hit right handed because he had more power. And Gomez you were telling the story will take a lot of swings lefty. Just to kind of balance things out for him. Giambi used to do that even though you know. Jason didn't hit right handed at any point in his career. He just felt like he gave him balance. Barnes will still do that. He'll take cuts not out on the field but underneath in the cage left handed. Because that will get you right when you go back to your right hand to swing and also make sure that your oblique stay. Parallel so you're not one side stronger than the other where you might pull an oblique muscle. That's a good point also. Ball game tomorrow is an hour earlier here in Washington. And this is uh, slowly hit the second. Two gone. Rosario at second now for DJ LeMahieu. He always comes to this point the, the dilemma for an opposing manager. What's he going to do is he going to walk the guy to get little, to the pitcher. Yeah a little easier in this one because they have a three nothing lead early. Now in a, in a zip zip game. You know they still may opt to pitch to him because it's Strasburg it's hard to hit etc. But up but three it, nothing you, you get in a squat and you try to get this guy out and then have the pitcher. Leading off next in, I think. I think this particular time, wouldn't you agree, was an easier yes. decision for yeah, Matt if Williams. It's zero zero, or even if you had the one nothing lead, I think you'd still do it. Now in a tight game, he was done in Milwaukee. Ron Renicky decided to pitch Lemayu and, and DJ it. burned him. Yep, and base it to right field for an RBI. And we discussed it that night. It's it's almost like. When they intentionally walk the guy in front of you to get to you, you say, "Okay, it's on. Let's go." Same thought process when you have a base open, first base open, and well, the pitcher behind you. Yeah, and the other thing for DJ, he has been hitting in that spot so much this year that I think that he's comfortable now here in his decision making. What am I going to do? When do I have to be aggressive? When do I have to be patient? One and two on LeMay who riding a six game hitting streak.
Tonight's game number 84 for the Rockies. And it's the first day of July. Welcome to July. The fourth Happy month. Canadian Day. Actually, is, is it Canadian Day? Yes. Huh? Larry Walker, if you're looking in tonight, happy Canadian Day. Justin Morneau. Justin Morneau, happy Canadian Day. Well, Ran, Rocky, Ran, Jeff, Ran, Jeff Francis. Jeff Francis. Got a save the other day for Oakland. Ran past the uh, Canadian Embassy today. Did you stop? K Street. Say hi. No, I just ran by. <laughs> it's on a mission. Walked around Georgetown today, and I, I've stayed in Georgetown in the past when when I was working in the NBA. The Nuggets always stayed in Georgetown. I, st I think they still do. And I never, it's a, it's a great area of, of D.C. If you come here and you're, you know, sightseeing, go up to Georgetown. I'd never been to Georgetown University. What a beautiful campus. It's up on the hill. Yep. Gorgeous campus. I don't know if they would have accepted you or I, but no. it was nice to walk around there. <laughs> it was like when we went to Harvard a few years ago when we were out in Boston. Went on the baseball <laughs> field there. And, you know, yeah, Jeff yeah. Breidich with the Rockies, the farm director. Jeff played baseball at Harvard. Well, he has the smarts. You and I. They didn't invite us. Didn't I don't understand us, no. that. Two and two on DJ. And that's fouled off. That for DJ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Typically has good at bats. I don't understand. But Susan Strand, our longtime graphics coordinator, popping off in the truck on, on, on a graphics monitor only we can see. We were talking about Harvard and Georgetown. She wrote no shot. <laughs> Stunned by that. Nice. Oh, well. Pitch number eight coming up to DJ. Rosario at second, and Strasburg wins that battle. That strikeout number three for Strasburg. Middle of two, it's three nothing Nationals. in D.C. and the Nationals put three up in the first on Christian Friedrich. He had a little bit of a rough inning, but he did have two strikeouts. And Jim Wright talked to him after his last start in Milwaukee about punching tickets when he gets ahead of the count. Everyone loves strikeouts and stuff like that, and it's just kind of a way to boost up the mentality to, you know, when you throw a pitch down in the dirt, use it as an opportunity that remember how that felt as an 0-2 pitch rather than it was a bad pitch in the dirt and we always go back to you know punching tickets as a frame of you know, reference 
You know, Jeff, you mentioned it too that Walt White said he's got to pitch down and also use that curveball. He did strike out Harper on the curve, and I think Desmond as well to get out of that inning. So maybe we'll see a little bit more of that if he can settle down. Had eight strikeouts in his last start. Yeah, that's the key, though, Mark, is working ahead down into the zone because a pitch of fastball, I don't care how hard it is at the major league level, it's going to get hit. And that's where when, when Christian's up, the balls are getting hit. But if he works ahead, that curveball, I, I really enjoy watching that thing. It's a 12 to 6 just biting down in the zone. Wilson Ramos will lead things off. 26-year-old backstop out of Venezuela. And I'm sure everybody recalls what he had to endure for 51 hours in November of 2011. And this heats up Rutledge. That'll be a base hit. That was smoke. He was abducted in Venezuela, held hostage, as I said, for 51 hours before government forces were able to get him back, and he was. Freed in the remote mountain areas near Montalban. Scary, scary deal for first, obviously, for Wilson, for his family, for the entire Nationals organization. The Rockies went through it with your Vittori Alba and his with son. It, with his son. Just glad there was a safe and safe conclusion. That's bunted in the air and it's caught. So Strasburg's out. Nice hustle by Willene. One out, and that'll bring up Denard Span. Yeah, guys charge it from every corner. Wolene throws off the mass, slides to make the catch. Takes coordination and concentration. That's not a play that you work on in spring training. You work on the bunt plays, you work on the pop ups, but not that little one off the bat that's 15 feet away from home plate. Span walked in the first. Anthony Rendon also walked in the first, and they would score on Jason Worth's double down the left field line. And that's to left. Dickerson moving quickly. We'll get there. Nice play by Corey. Got a good break on the baseball. And that's what you have to get to make a running catch. He's worked hard on his defense since day one of spring training to better himself, get better jumps. Whether it's in center field or left field, wherever they ask him to, to go out and play, he's done it. Here's the second baseman Rendon. Who until last night was playing a lot of third base. Ryan Zimmerman was playing left field. I think it's an easier transition. I know Rendon's played a lot of third in his career, comfortable over there, but it was an easier transition moving from third base back to second base than vice versa. Well, what had to be a difficult transition was Ryan Zimmerman going to the outfield and he did okay on ball you know he caught things that were hit at him. He's not a natural outfielder. He has the throwing issues. The best place for him would be first but you have an outstanding first baseman if you're Washington and Adam LaRoche so that's not an option other than the the handful of days that Matt Williams gives LaRoche a day off. Then the question becomes for Ryan Zimmerman changing the arm angle going back to the infield is he going to have come up with the sore arm at some point. And Rendon hits it in the air to Brandon Barnes. And that retires the side Ramos had a leadoff single he's left at first base we will go to the third three nothing Washington.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Ford Escape. Smart, safe, and fun to drive. Ford Escape, go further. By T-Mobile, Tuesday night baseball. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. That's a gorgeous view of our nation's capital. From the Capitol Mall. See that uh, reflecting pool? Remember yes. when Forrest Gump ran through that? I do. One of my all-time favorite movies. Because well, Forrest just had to keep running. Forrest was in outstanding shape. <laughs> Ball in on Christian Friedrich. Friedrich in the top of the order. Dickerson and Rutledge. Rockies have a couple of singles against Strasburg. Morneau and Rosario. It's on the outside corner. One and two on Strasburg or uh, on Friedrich and a strikeout of Friedrich. Last night you may recall that it looked like Jordan Zimmerman balked when Charlie Blackman was at the plate. Charlie backed out and time was not tall. Here, watch as Charlie backs, backs out. Joe West never granted time, and then Joe West took his mask off to explain. To Charlie. Now I, I saw Joe today and I asked him for, for an explanation. I said, How does that work? Well, here's rule 6.02. If after the pitcher starts his windup or comes to a set position with a runner on, he does not go through with his pitch because the batter has inadvertently caused the pitcher to interrupt his delivery, it shall not be called a balk. And that's Joe, Joe explained it that way. He said, A batter can't cause a balk. Now, had he stayed in the batter's box, and for whatever reason uh, Zimmerman stopped his delivery then it would have been a ball but that's a clarification and, and so my you know, apologies Joe yeah for all of us, mine, <laughs> mine as well, well and, and, we, and, and there are three or four things that come up every year and you played for more than a yeah. decade that you say boy I've never seen that uh, you know I've been in this game 29 years I, I called it a balk last night and Joe has been in it for 33 years and he got it right so you learn something new in this game and, and, and to finish out the rest of how that goes and it just says until uh, you know once that time is called then both the batter and the pitcher start over from quote scratch so it's like there's no pitch he called time start over it's a do over Rutledge hits it in the air to shallow left and Harper ooh, it's oh Desmond. what a catch what a great catch by Ian Desmond and that ends the inning.
Washington leading three to nothing over the Rockies. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Huey, that would be the uh, president's house. Ran by it a couple times. Yeah. Wells Fargo customers, get your two-for-one Rockies club-level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies, Wells Fargo Bank member, FDIC. Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche, Ryan Zimmerman, three, four, and five for the Nats in the third. Double for Worth to drive in two his first time up, and he takes a strike. He's got 37 ribbies now. I know beards are all in vogue with baseball players these days, but I'm thinking if I'm playing in the middle Atlantic <laughs> region or Atlanta or I, the Trop with Tampa, I'm I'm getting rid of all the facial hair and all the long hair and, and trying to go as and maybe aerodynamic never, maybe as possible. I number don't want two guard to make me uh, <laughs> even warmer, right? Number two guard on the haircut. Yeah. You mentioned Forrest Gump earlier. That's kind of what Forrest looked like after he was done doing all the running. Yeah, running across the country and back. Bryce Harper, he's got a mini Jason Worth going. Oh, that's, that's a little up. high. Well, with the humidity, that ball can slip because it goes down to your fingertips. You have the sweat coming out of the sleeves. Tough to keep the hands dry. Three and one on Worth. And that one got away from him also. Third walk allowed by Friedrich. Hey, time is running out to vote for your 2014 MLB All-Stars. You can help send your favorite Rockies to the All-Star game by voting up to 35 times at Rockies.com. Vote exclusively at Rockies.com or on your mobile phone. Voting ends this Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So 9.59 in the mountain time zone. Breaking ball for a strike. You know, Justin Morneau deserves to go and he, he's fallen out of the top five among first basemen in the National League. Troy's leading everybody. Another guy who deserves to go. We just showed Charlie Blackman is sixth in the voting among outfielders. There's Chuck Nasty, Charlie Culberson next to him. And then a young man who did a nice job last night, Johan Flande. He did. He came out of the game, and Rob Scahill gave up a couple of his runs, but thought his performance was everything you could hope for. Yeah, he threw a lot of strikes. He worked quickly. He sunk the baseball. He was not afraid. I said it last night. He pitched better than that line, and that line's not bad. There's no. nothing wrong with that line. It's a competitive game. In fact, uh, Troy Tulowitzki after the game uh, gave him a big compliment. He said he he kept us in the game. He gave us an opportunity, you know, to win a baseball game. Ball to center field. Stubbs got to move back. Drew will make the catch. Waist high. One out. Let's go back to Johan from last night. Five and a third. Three or six hits. One walk, but he had nine ground ball outs, including this double play off the bat of Bryce Harper. Only a couple fly outs. But control both sides of the plate. Use the fastball slider change up mix to keep the Washington Nationals hitters off balance. Second big league start. Ten years in the minor leagues. Third organization for Flande. Strike one on Ryan Zimmerman. 
Made a sack fly down the right field line. Good catch right up against the corner wall in foul territory by Brandon Barnes. A cargo every day there's a positive news on his rehab today he was uh, swinging lightly against in the in the batting cage and it wasn't just front it was, it was actually live pitching I'm mean, not coming 90 miles an hour is batting practice you know speed but that is encouraging after a couple of days of hitting off the tee and front toss graduated to that it's a big step I don't think people realize that step from going just taking the dry swings where you're, where you're just standing there. It's like a practice golf swing. You're not hitting the ball, anything like that, but to move up to, to batting practice. I mean, at least psychologically for the players, you feel like you're a ball player again. Well, I've never seen Cargo take really a controlled swing because when he <laughs> swings, it's violent and the, and the ball so gets you, hit really hard. So what you're saying is the hand is holding up. Right? I'm guessing. It's doing just fine. I mean, how nice will it be when Walt Weiss can write his name in the lineup and Nolan Arenado and Nolan's he's going to write in the lineup pretty soon. Last night, Nolan played again. Colorado Springs was one for five. That's what he does is irrelevant. I was talking right. to Walt. He says he feels great. He looks good at the plate. He could go 0 for 20. And now I know he hasn't, but he could. As long as he feels good, there's no pain. That's all that matters. Getting his timing back. He's going to play again tonight. He'll be reevaluated when the Rockies see him on Thursday. Could very well be. See in the lineup when the Rockies open up that 10 game homestand against the Dodgers on Thursday. Dodgers, by the way, moved into first place yesterday. And a half game lead over San Francisco. 2 2. That's inside. 3 and 2 on Zimmerman. A lot of pitches. Christian 57 here with one out in the third. Yeah, and throwing more balls and strikes. 29 balls, 28 strikes. And that misses. That's the fourth walk by Friedrich. Two on for Bryce Harper. Subaru brings you the manager's challenge. If and when there's a questionable call, instant replay will be used to determine the outcome. It's brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Matt Williams, one of nine managers in Major League Baseball now. This was unheard of some time ago. When you were playing, it was probably unheard of. That never managed at, at any level and I think a bigger deal was made of it than, than should and I don't think a big deal will be made about it going forward with the success of Mike Matheny with you know Robin Ventura Walt Weiss was solid last year in his first season I mean, these are guys that were outstanding players thinking man players cerebral players yeah, absolutely I mean and, and that's not to dismiss the, the managers in Major League Baseball that put the time in in, my, in the minor leagues and Everybody. learn and learn that way, but most of those guys didn't have lengthy playing careers as a Walt Weiss did, as a Mike Matheny, as a Robin Ventura, as a Matt Williams. Everybody's different in what they can do and and what they can handle. It used to be that's just the way it was, old school. You you started down in the minor leagues and you work your way up you became a coach and then a bench coach and so finally through the process you became the manager but now guys are saying well do they need to do that some have been special assistants before they come manager they're around the ball club but they have the long career they played for different styles and, and different types of managers so it, it, it's okay this is pulled foul. Well, if you look at the National League West, obviously Walt went from you know player, um, and then he was you know the pro he was he was coaching at the high school level. He was a special assistant for a long time to Dan O'Dowd. He never managed in the minor leagues. Bud Black 
was a bench coach never managed in the minor leagues he worked with uh, Mike Sosha who was a pitching coach prior to that uh, Bruce Bochy was Don Mattingly was not and Kirk Gibson was not four rookie managers this year oh Brad Osmus one of those guys he was a front office guy but also a catcher yes. and a really bright guy Dartmouth grad. Of course, Brian Price, a longtime <laughs> pitching coach. And, and Rick has been an organizational guy for a long time. A third base coach, bench coach. Two and two on Harper, two on, one out. Nationals leading three to nothing. And the sharp slider is blocked, and it's three and two. So the bottom line, there's no correct way to go about who you hire and what route they take. Here's the three two to Harper. He was out front. That that is a quick quick bat he has. That's something that you can't teach. They well either he's, he's have left, it. It's left on left it's 91. And he's he's been out front the whole time. But notice where his hands start. I mean they start and come through the zone. Well, that was off the end of the bat but they have that nice loop going directionally back towards the pitcher. He gets you and I'll have you explain this a sec. He gets significant separation when he gets that foot down his stretch his stretch because his hands are going back as his foot's going forward. So it's like a big rubber band. Strike three on the corner Harper called out. He's kind of hanging around and Marty Foster's staring him down. Two outs big pitch from Friedman. Well, they go with the slider. He may have got the yeah. gift. We're just looking on the four strike zone, it was pitch number seven. But Willeen caught it with his thumb up, so that gave the appearance that it was closer to the corner than it was. Yeah, good for Christian. Nonetheless, two, two outs. outs. Yep, two outs, and Ian Desmond will come up. And a swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Desmond struck out swinging his first time striking out at a higher rate than he has at any point in his career. He struck out 101 times this year and a little more than 300 at bats almost every three at bats. And thus the batting average is down for Desmond in the mid 230s. He's traditionally been a better hitter than that. Last year he hit 280, the year before 292. Both the years, 20 plus home runs, 20 a year ago, 25 in 2012. Well, do you see the home or the strikeouts starting to creep up? He had 145 last year. So that was 600 at bats. He's well above that pace this year. He's Time for the uh, Steel T. Heating and air cool stat Huey never a trip charge for repair. That's a sixty nine dollar value steel T the T stands for trust go to steel T.com last night Ian Desmond broke up uh, a 2 2 ball game with a three run double after the Rockies intentionally walked Bryce Harper Desmond in his career 11 for 17 with 16 ribbies when the batter reforms intentionally walked. It was still the right move to make. Yes. Strategically by the Rockies it, it didn't work out. Clearly, but it was the right move to make. Yeah, you had to set up a force play, double play option. One and two on Desmond. You you start getting in two strike counts, Huey. I imagine when you've started to strike out at a, at a rate that. He's not not that anybody ever wants to strike out but that that's higher than normal. That 
get in your head a little bit and you oh, go, oh, yeah. oh, here we go. It's 0-2, yeah. 1-2. I don't want to punch out. No, and it does, and it'll start to play with your mind. And so you become a, a defensive swinger at the plate where you're, you don't really see the ball. You're, you, you see it so late. You go to swing and you strike out again. You say, man, how could I do that? And then it just starts to snowball on you. Two and two. Tried to get him to chase up. And now three and two. Boy, there have been a number of three two counts tonight. Well, when you're sitting at, at 71 pitches and it's two and two thirds innings, remember you don't have Franklin Morales out out in the bullpen to be your long guy because he is going to start on Thursday back in Colorado. And even if Frankie pitches really well, and you hope he does, clearly, he's going to need some middle inning help because he's not as stretched out as he was when he was starting. Found off. Runners will come back. No, because he's been even if he's gone out there for a couple innings he's sitting at 30 or 40 pitches so to ask him to go out and throw 100 pitches is, is not probable and this is setting up where the Rockies will have to go to either Chad Betters or Tommy Canley but in Walt's mind and Tommy Ronald's mind they, they know that Thursday in all likelihood you'll probably need a bridge guy And that's fouled off. If you're Desmond, are you eliminating the breaking ball because of the number of walks with Friedrich? Yeah, I'm going to sit fastball. If he throws a curveball, you just tip your cap. And, and that's what he struck out. It was a Bryce Harper back in the first inning. Now you have the and struck him out in the third with the first one was a curveball, second one was a slider. You had the guts to throw it here though. If you're Christian. Christian, I would. Curveball. He did. More of a slider and it's fouled off. That is the pitch that you felt more comfortable throwing. It's still elevated and not where you wanted to. You want to bury those. Give the appearance that it's a strike coming out of the hand when it when it gets to the plate it's a it's a ball but the hitter can't stop his swing. Another three two, and that's on the ground. A third good pick up by Wheeler. He's got to go to first. Out at first base. Wheeler wanted to go the short way. Forgot maybe that the runners were moving. Matt Williams is going to come out. And then wants to talk to Rob Drake. And Joe West is calling Christian Friedrich and the rest of the Rockies back out onto the field in case they do decide to challenge this. You know, Wheeler, the natural moves to go to second. His momentum's going that way, but. We forgot Zimmerman that. got the great jump because on three two he's moving right. Well, this is going to be close. Yeah, that's really close. Where's the ball is it in the glove. No that that. Yep. He's out he, he looked out on that one. That was a better look at it. Yeah. Man, they won't, they won't challenge it. Yes. Great job by Wheeler. Strong throw from Ryan Wheeler after making the adjustment. Yeah, good deal. Despite the two walks, no runs for the Nationals. 3 nothing as we go to the fourth.
if we're talking about all-star voting and it ends coming up at the end of this week let's show you the updated all-star voting for the national league this is as of today goldschmidt at first utley at second third base it's ramirez tulo leads all vote getters at short molina behind the plate of the outfielders now mccutcheon gomez and puig and justin morneau steps to the plate guys you were talking about him being deserving of an all-star bid especially in minnesota this has popped down the line and a play made by Harper. This Nationals team, guys, what, a half game out of first place as of the start of play today? They don't have a single player that's in the top five at any position. So you figure somebody's going to go from the Nationals, right? Would it be LaRoche from first base? Would it be Desmond? What you're thinking? Well, probably. Uh, I, I think they'll, they may get one of their bullpen guys also, but LaRoche has the best numbers, but then it depends on need. Well, and for what, the National yeah. League team, we're, we're you know, do they do they need help? Again, the game means something. So you're not just saying, well, well, we'll take, you know, another first baseman if they feel like they're strong at that spot. Well, and it depends on other clubs and, and what happens with some of the clubs that are only going to have one player sent. I mean, I'm thinking about the Cubs. Maybe Anthony Rizzo would would have to take that spot. Or you go to New York, David Wright would be the logical choice. But if his shoulder is not healthy, who do they take? Would it be? I mean, so there's so many question marks that go into the All-Star selections. Uh, you just hope that Morneau is there because he, he deserves to be, to be there. Right. The other thing, too, with pitchers, you know, when do they throw before the All-Star game? If they throw on a Friday or Saturday where they couldn't be used, or even Sunday, not be used on Tuesday they would change them out for somebody else you know even though the record's not great Jordan Zimmerman's six and four with you know an ERA below three right two two on stubs that's fouled off you know, Soriano's got 19 saves. The league's hitting 155 against him. Tyler Clipper, the league's hitting 195 against him as a setup guy. That's why I think that the pressure on the managers now in the All Star game is so hard. This is one try to get most of your guys involved. That's a backup slider serve from Steven Strasburg. Strike at number five for Strasburg. Molina will come up. But for the managers, how they get everybody involved and what happens because it means so much. Check out the Great Clips charity cuts on Wednesday, July 9th. Stop by the Great Clips kiosk near left field for a free haircut from a Great Clips stylist with all donations going to Colorado Rockies charities. I think he might be due for a haircut. I don't think he's going. <laughs> don't think he's even interested. if it's for charity. Well, for charity, he may. One and zero on Willie. He lined a single to right center his first time up. Rockies have two hits. Morneau a single with two outs in the first. And Willie's and he's got another base hit. Good job by Rosario. Two out single here in the fourth, and that'll bring up Ryan Wheeler. That's a carbon copy of his first at bat. Are you going to put the ball in a, a spot where it was earlier? Well, I will do the same thing. Those are always great when, when you're in the batter's box and you're working hard on something you're you're you know what you're doing wrong but it hasn't translated all the work you've done in batting practice early work to the game but then you you put two at bats together you get base hits to right field now you can start to say okay i can see the results now wheeler hit the ball hard his first time up lined out to short
Rockies their last 11 games they've averaged 5.3 runs an outing that's outstanding. But they have only two wins. Pitching staff and a good portion of their. Everyday lineup has been decimated by injuries. And speaking of that we didn't mention this last night Eddie Butler threw a bullpen yesterday. That's a real good news also. That homestand coming up will be big if the it Rockies will. can find a way and I know the last two homestands have gone poorly. But if they can find a way uh, over 10 games leading into the all star break to have a good homestand. Get a little momentum back with guys returning. You know sets you up for the second half to. Hopefully make some sort of run. Wheeler's thrown out that ends the fourth inning middle of inning number four the Nats leading three nothing. Somebody to watch for down the road. Angels having a much better year this season than the last couple. They're 11 games north of 500. Everybody chasing the Oakland A's, 51 and 31, 20 games over 500. Christian Friedrich in the bottom of the fourth. We'll see Wilson Ramos, then the pitcher Strasburg, followed by Denard Span. And Chad Bettis is up and throwing for the Rockies. It was 75 pitches for Christian. That's a good start. You're looking at maybe 100, 105 pitches if you, if you can get that far. But the only problem is he's due up third next half inning. Oh, pitch one out and Strasburg will come up. He tried to bunt last time with uh, Ramos at first and he popped it up and was caught in foul ground by Rosario. You know, hit the first Washington Nationals home run in in D.C. Yep. Yes, I do. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine in your program, number one in your hearts, Vinny Castillo. 
The man with the golden smile. Strasburg down the line. Oh, a dive by Barnes. It gets by him. And Strasburg is going to go to second. And now he's winding around second and he holds there. For anybody else, that would have been an easy triple. But he's a pitcher and he just kind of coasted into second. His teammates in the bullpen are wearing him out. It was more of a lumber in the second. Was it going to pull anything? And I don't think Matt Williams minds this at all. Third hit of the season for Strasburg. Brandon lays out and hustles after he misses it to get up and get back there. But Strasburg coming around third, looking at Bob Henley, the third base coach. Even though Bob was waving him, Strasburg said, No, I'm going to drop anchor here at second base. Denard Span, a walk and a fly ball to left. He takes a strike. Denard, 30 years of age, born here in our nation's capital. Acquired from Minnesota after the 2012 season for Alex Meyer, right handed pitcher. Though he was born in Washington, he primarily grew up in Tampa. Tampa Catholic High School. He's also an all state wide receiver. He went for a time to Hillsboro High, which is a really famous high school down there in terms of producing baseball players. Gary Sheffield, Dwight Gooden. Did Floyd Yeomans go to that school too? Floyd Yeomans was with the Expos, right handed yeah. pitcher yeah. through hard. Made of mine. Remember Elijah Dukes? Yeah. Good strong kid. He went there also. Two balls, two strikes on Span. And this ball line to right, base hit. Strasburg will just move 90 feet. Good play by Barnes. First and third. One out. Two pitches ago before Span fouled the ball off. He's talking to himself. Fastball, fastball, fastball. And this last pitch was a fastball. Drops the barrel and bat down. One hops right field. Brandon Barnes. Hey, Walt's going to go and take the baseball from Christian Friedrich. So. Christian able to just get 10 outs tonight. And he'll run off the mound. And the Rockies will move on to Chad Bettis. 3 0 Washington.
third, one out in the fourth inning. Chad Bettis on, and Anthony Rendon will be the first guy he faces. The day after every Rockies victory, get 40% off your online order at Papa John's. Enter the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Nats have won three consecutive ball games, and they're seven games over 500 at home. Strasburg doubled. He's now a third Denard Span single. And Chad Bettis is now on for the Rockies. This is his third time in the big leagues this year. 13 previous appearances. He has struggled. He has pitched well every time he's gone back to Colorado Springs. Yeah, and that's why he's hoping the third time's a charm coming up here. Last time he was up, he's only up for one appearance. Got hit hard and then was sent back out. One and oh on Rendon. That skips up to the plate two and out. That's in there at 93, so it's two and one. Yeah, despite this game appearing lopsided, it's three nothing already. Washington, you know, the Rockies is somehow you get a double play ball, stay in this baseball game. You just can't allow a crooked number to be put up, and that gets all the way through. Strasburg's not going to venture home. Anybody else would have. Obviously, Span moved up on what I think will be a pass ball. Ball did not appear to hit the dirt prior to reaching the lane. I will goes off the end of his glove. I'm not making an excuse for Lane. He's got to make that play. But when you set a target and, and unfortunately all night the ball's not arriving typically where you set up it's tough this ball down the left field line that's going to score two and Rendon in the second with a double five nothing Washington a lot like last night where you know, the reliever comes in and if you can make a pitch to keep the ball game close. You're, you're feeling better, but now with that double down the line, 17th double of the season for Rendon, drives in two runs, held by the pass ball, and you trail 5 nothing. But to your point a moment ago, yeah, I mean, he leans back there, and he sets up one place, and it's another place. It's... That's what makes it hard for catchers when the pitcher's not hitting his spots. Worth a two run double in the first and a walk. 48 RBIs for Rendon. And you talk about candidates to be an all star for Washington. Well, Rendon as a second baseman will get consideration. Yeah, Chase those... Utley will be voted in. With those numbers, he could. He's played enough third base too, but he would go in as a second baseman. Now Washington four for six with runners in scoring position tonight. And again, another hitter's count. It was a three-one pitch Rendon hit, and now it's two and zero oh on Worth. And 
it's three and one on Worth. These are the, the scary counts for the shortstop and third baseman. Three one count with a big power guy like Worth. You have to back up two or three strides. Worth 6'5", 245 pounds. We were discussing his ability to steal bases earlier. I mean, that, that's similar in size to what Jose Canseco was. Dave Winfield. Dave Winfield, big guys who could steal bases. And worth this year's five for five. Three two. It's off his foot. Lewitsky sitting this one out. He's fine. Just needed a day. Keith Duggar with him. Brian Jordan, the Rocky strength coach. And this ball's driven to center field and deep. Stubbs going back, and he's going to have to play it off the base of the wall. Rendon around third. He's coming home. Worth into second with a double, and it's six nothing. Three doubles in the inning. Talked about how tall and how strong Jason Worth is. This one he gets his arms extended off the base of the wall in right center. Three RBIs tonight for Worth. at the plate by Rosario three runs in the inning three runs in the first inning for Washington six runs seven hits now and they have four doubles in the game Yeah, Chad has a great arm. He had a good spring. But clearly, based on what we've witnessed during the regular season, guys pick him up really well. That's where you're going to have to go back and look at the tapes because last year doesn't weren't too many good swings off of him. In the second half of the season, he was coming in 94, 96 on the fastball, hard slider. Yeah, but even the balls that have been 94, 95, 96 are, are getting this, barreled this year. This year, right. And that's why you have to go look and, and see what was I doing last year compared to this year. Is there something different? Two out, Zimmerman coming up with worth the third. Fans, you don't want to miss the first ever Colorado Rockies Invitational Barbecue Championship on Saturday, July 26. Prior to the game, the barbecue contest will be in the top three in the country, and a People's Choice Award will be given. Space is limited, so be sure to get your tickets to this exciting event today at rockies.com slash barbecue. Slider on the inside corner, a strike.
Sack fly and a walk. For Zimmerman. This is a wild pitch and running home is worth. And it's 7 0. It's uh, hard to watch right now. This is not pretty. For Willene, he's he's battling behind the plate. But where that yeah. ball hits, he stands no chance to try to block it. He's got no shot. That that pitch was soaring 58 feet, so two feet in front of home plate, it hit. And now you're, you're it's just a guess on where the ball is going to go. Three and two. This ball toward the hole and on through a base hit for Zimmerman. Bryce Harper will come up now for Washington. But not for uh, Jim Wright goes out to talk to Bettis. The former Texas Tech product. Auto glass issues, trust Safe Flight online at safelight.com on the phone at 303 287 5000. I was telling Chad, there's nobody warming up. We're going to need you to take some innings out here. Don't be looking over your shoulder, try to get out of this one. Harper slashes at that one. Base hit the center for Harper. Zimmerman stops at second. And Desmond will hit. There's been a strikeout and a ground ball to third. You know what's camp with Washington this year? Desmond's brother in law, Josh Renneke. That's right. I forgot they were brother in law.
Desmond married Josh's sister. He's not only a very good player, he's a, a very good leader in that clubhouse for Washington is Desmond. One, two, strike three. And that ends the inning. Bettis strikes out Desmond. Nine come to bat for Washington in the fourth four cross home plate. It's seven nothing next. But I want to go back to Steven Strasburg and his struggles against Milwaukee. He made some mechanical adjustments, but when we go back to the start where he gives up the grand slam to Scooter Jeanette, he was talking about his left shoulder was flying open. So as he gets ready to deliver the ball, we'll stop it right as soon as he gets ready. This back knee was driving too close to the ground, and that was causing the arm to be flat. So when it comes across the zone, it's belt high. Now tonight, much different story. Working on keeping the left shoulder closed. The right knee is staying more upright, but the pitch is down into the zone. That's why he's getting some easy outs and some some strikeouts because of the mechanical adjustment that he made in between starts with pitching coach Steve McCaddy saying if that left shoulder flies open my back legs going to drop down that is going to cause my arm to flatten out the ball will stay flat. Well no problems for Steven tonight so far in this first uh, five innings or four innings. So Brandon Barnes will lead it off in the fifth inning uh, against Strasburg, who this year, Huey, for the first time in his young career, has allowed more hits than innings pitch. He came into tonight having hurled 104 and two thirds, having allowed 111 hits, which is a significant departure from his first few years in the big leagues where the hits were far less than the innings pitch. But it goes back to decreased velocity on the fastball. So when you're not throwing as hard, you have to be more fine with your pitches. It just, it, the margin of error when you're throwing 97 or 98 is much greater. These guys aren't seeing it. They're not reacting as fast. 94, everybody throws 94 now. Yeah, pretty, pretty soon it's going to be the average Major League fastball. It's already above 91, where it used to be a tick wow. below 90. Yeah, it used to be 89. First, when I started coaching and, and scouting, doing that, so the major league average was an 89 mile an hour fastball. Now it's up to 91, and climbing towards 92. Barnes grounded the second his first time. Strasburg has him in a 1 2 count, and that's out in front of the plate. Strasburg to LaRoche, one out. DJ LeMay who will come up. And 
pretty consistent strike one and at this point with a seven nothing lead it ought to be. Nothing will drive pitching coaches and managers. Crazier than a guy that falls behind with a significant lead. And Zimmerman makes a good play two outs. Crowds aware of Ryan Zimmerman's throwing issues so they I think gave a little bit more of a, an applause for that play. This looks painful when he has to come up and throw over the top. The Rockies upcoming home schedule is brought to you by Remax. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. Rockies will play 10 at home before the All-Star break. And it will be a very important homestand. The Dodgers for four, the Padres for three, and the Twins for three. The schedule uh, abates a little bit in after the Dodgers series. Dodgers now in first in the National League West, but the Rockies throughout June and into the first part of July playing nothing but top tier teams. And that coupled with the myriad of injuries has, has not been a, a formula for success. Seven and 20 in the month of June. And they started the month at 20, 28 and 27. One and two on Bettis. It's actually 8 and 20. Let me correct that in June. 1, 2, 3 inning for Strasburg. Washington leading 7 0, middle of 5. Seven nothing Washington leading game two of three for the Rockies in the District of Columbia Washington with nine hits the Rockies have been limited to three by Steven Strasburg Wilson Ramos the catcher will lead off Chad Bettis in relief of Christian Friedrich Friedrich went three and a third and he gave up five runs on five hits he walked four and struck out three. So Toyota talk in it. We'll try to get some questions here momentarily. Ramos is one for two. Single and a ground ball to second. Mm -hmm. 
And that fastball is high ball one. One ball, one strike. First question on a pop fly. Who has priority on the catch when <laughs> both guys are on it? The loudest, the fastest, senior player. Here we <laughs> well, it depends on where the ball was hit. The outfielders have priority over the infielders, so because they're, they're coming in for the ball. And Rutledge unable to make the play. That'll be an error on Josh, who's sixth this year. Let me just finish that with the pop up priority. Let, let, let me retract for a second. So the center fielder has priority over the right fielder and the left fielders. The outfielders have priority over the infielders. Shortstop has priority over everybody in the infield, especially the, sh the third baseman. Second baseman over the first baseman. First and third baseman over the catcher. Got it? Got it. Okay. Strasburg. Pushes the bunt foul. It's 0 and 1. <laughs> Bettis goes to DJ. Rosberg with a successful sacrifice. Denard Span will come up. When Anderson and Lyles come back, who are the most likely to be sent down? The Rockies are going to keep the five guys they think are going to give them the best opportunity to win a baseball game. Well, and Anderson sooner than Lyles. I mean, and Lyles is still a ways off. Yeah, Brett's throwing uh, down in the springs tomorrow. But Lyles is still some time away. He needs to get that wrist and hand re x rayed. And he's throwing bullpens without being able to put a glove on. Yeah, but I, I imagine it, it's, it's, it's going to be based on who's giving you the best opportunity, yes. though. Not going to be, well, this guy was. You know, brought up in front of that guy, or you know, this guy was selected here. It's about who's going to give them the best opportunity to win. Yeah, the Rockies no. showed that early on. I mean, Wilt Lopez making a big paycheck, and he was sent out very quickly this year. I was say along those lines, you've seen no word on his MRI as of tonight. He had it late in the afternoon yesterday. Basically, want to compare that MRI also to the one that was the image taken during spring training. One and two on Denard Span. A walk, a fly ball to left, and a single. He scored two. And that's it deep in the hole. Rutledge jump throw. Good looking play. So Rutledge takes a hit away from Span. Two gone, and that'll bring up Rendon. You want to atone for the error that you made to lead off this inning, and that he does reaches far, has to jump, spin, throw on the money to Justin Morneau, and you're getting a fast runner in Denard Span, who's also hits from the left side, so he's closer. But that's the way to make up for that. That's just, doesn't make you feel better. It doesn't take all the sting away from the air, but it does help. Swung on and missed by Rendon. A walk, fly ball to right, and a two run double for Rendon. Rendon doubled off of Bettis. He was the first guy that Chad faced in relief of Christian Friedrich.
And this is in the air to center field. Stubbs has got it. No harm by the error. And we'll go to the sixth inning. Seven nothing Washington. Washington as we go to the top of the sixth inning the Rockies will have the top of their order Corey Dickerson to lead off then Rutledge and Justin Moineau thanks for tweeting us your questions tonight during Toyota talk for more answers visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash root sports RM let's see if the Rockies can do something with Steven Strasburg he's allowed just three hits in the game all singles well, he's been efficient with his pitches 72 pitches 52 of them have been strikes six ground ball outs couple fly outs five strikeouts big number zero walks well the outing in Milwaukee seven runs eight hits four and two thirds was his second shortest of the year second start of the year he went just four and a third. Unfortunately, he's bounced back nicely yeah. thus far. Dickerson will take a strike right about the belt. Well, on that start in, in Milwaukee, came on the heels of that 14 inning ball game that they played. They needed some, or 16 inning, excuse me, they needed some length from him the next day and they didn't get it. Here's the one strike pitch to Dickerson. And it's on the ground up the middle. Cut off there by Red Dome. And you can see he's got a left side arm. Strong, strong arm. Because he got to that ball, set his feet, planted on the right foot. Threw Corey out easily. And watch him go to this, and then he stops his momentum. And that's the arm slot that you have to throw from as a second baseman sometimes. Is you can't come over the top, but you still have to have the arm strength to throw sidearm. And he does. Josh Rutledge caught looking and a little pop fly to shallow left that Ian Desmond made a nice play on. So the 20 batters that Strasburg has faced tonight, 12 first pitch strikes. Pulled that fastball off the plate. It's one ball, one strike. That was the pitch, maybe that hard curveball that when we first saw him pitch at San Diego State, even more than the Great velocity that he would maintain in his starts for the late Tony Gwynn. It was that 
that power slurve. Because yeah, it was it wasn't as hard as a slider should be, but it was faster than the curveball. And it had a so lot of it, tilt and angle. Yeah, to it. it wasn't it wasn't so much the way it went. It wasn't a, a 12 to 6. It wasn't a late breaker, but it, it, it was a foot and a half break, which you don't see. And so for Strasburg, that was his money pitch. Remember the flack they caught when he came back from Tommy John surgery and they shut him down. Mike Grizzle said up. You know, I'm not going to waste his future for this one year. Everybody thought they were bluffing and they weren't. That's back up the middle. That's whistled past Strasburg. Good swing from Rutledge. And with one out, Josh is aboard for Justin Morneau, who has one of the Rockies' four hits. Well, don't miss the first annual movie night at Coors Field on Sunday, July 13th, with a post game showing of The Sandlot. To order your movie night ticket package, including a limited edition blanket, go to Rockies.com slash movie. Sunday, July 13th, after the game against the Minnesota Twins. The movie The Sandlot. That's called strike on Morneau. May have been a little tall. How many times have your kids watched the movie The Sandlot? Oh, they've seen that. <laughs> Major League was on it. Major League Two was on in the clubhouse. Was it yesterday <laughs> or two days ago? Two days ago. And that was kind of interesting because then you go upstairs and there's Bob Euchre. That was Sunday. Milwaukee. That's off the plate. Two and one on Morneau. Has a seven game hitting streak after singling in the first inning. Hit 327 in June. Drove in 25 runs in June. Three home runs, five doubles. That's to first. LaRoche a good feed and back to Strasburg covering. 3 6 1, the double play turned by Washington. Middle of inning number six, it's all Nationals. They're up 7 0.
that Astros had the lead on the Rockies. There's Charlie Blackman celebrating a birthday as Charlie is turning 28 today. He's only played on his birthday on one day, not in the starting lineup today. Let's show you the day that he played. And it was three years ago, and it was late in the game, and he pinch hit, and he hit the first home run of his career off of Soria, and he remembered it earlier today. First home run, I was 25 because it was my birthday, and I wasn't in the lineup that night, and I got a pinch hit appearance late in the game off of Joaquin Soria, and I hit my first career home run. Pretty cool. It was really cool. Really cool. Tops of my list of cool things. Yeah, really cool. And you guys know that Charlie Blackman has a, like a whole trunk full of cool things. I asked him, was it cooler than the six hit game? And he was like, mm, I uh, toss up. So we'll leave it at that. Well, you always remember your first home run and, and happy birthday from, uh, from us to Charlie. I don't know. I, I think the six hit game might might be up there. Yeah, because he's going to hit more home runs. I don't know how many six hit games you get <laughs> in your career. Three and one on Jason Worth. Two doubles and a walk, three ribbies tonight for Worth. And he walks again. Adam LaRoche had an infield hit. And a fly ball to center field as well as a ground ball to second. So he's one for three. LaRoche hit the only home run of the ball game yesterday. Tulo came close. He went off the very top mm -hmm. of the left field wall. Walt was talking about that ball Drew Stubbs hit that we were discussing last night that had it hopped up and, and hit the wall and not gone over it would have been a decision as he said for Stu Cole whether to send Drew Stubbs all the way around it would have been one of those possible inside the park home runs especially the way Drew runs might have been our third inside the park home run we've witnessed well, the two. first two for Brandon Barnes yeah his first two home runs but Drew has one in his career not surprisingly Came in Cincinnati a few years ago. One and two. Matt Belisle has begun throwing. Bo McLaughlin looking on. He went. Yes, yep. he did. Good pitch. Hard slider. That was well executed. First strikeout for Chad Bettis. We'll go back to last night in the sixth inning for Drew Stubbs. He jumped on the Z Jordan Zimmerman fastball, and this is what we were referencing. It hit so hard off the warning track that it bounced up into the no man's land in center field because if it doesn't, that ball will kick to the right. Nobody else is going to get to it except for Denard, and he's not going to catch Drew until he at least reaches third base. Ryan McMahon. If you look at prospect for the Rockies hit a home run again tonight for Asheville is 12th of the year.
Zimmerman hits a towering pop up to shallow right center and it drops. Take a look at this big, big swing from Zimmerman, and DJ's going back looking to see if there's going to be some help at where Brandon had started. And right field just can't catch up to it. And Walt's going to go out and take the baseball for Bettis, so Matt Belisle will come on. Two on one out, seven nothing Washington in the sixth. Great seats with $5 going towards the Green Fund, which plants trees in the Denver area. Join us Sunday for the next Green Game as the Rockies take on the Dodgers. Visit Rockies.com slash green for more information. That's the Anacostia River reflecting in the uh, foreground. Rockies trailing 7-0. One out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jason Worth at second. Ryan Zimmerman, who reached on that Pop that dropped is at first base. Bryce Harper coming up and Matt Belisle's on for the 36th time. And the last time he pitched was Friday night in Milwaukee. He took the loss in that ball game. Two thirds of an inning, one earned run. Outside ball one. Harper a base hit his last time. He's one for three. Struck out his first two times. And that's too far in. Tyler Anderson made a start last night for Tulsa back healthy and went five innings gave up three runs two earned on eight hits didn't walk anybody struck out five a game eventually run won by the drillers eight to seven. A lot of those minor league teams is kicking off their second half of their seasons. Two and one. Mm -hmm. 
Harper who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated when he was a precocious 16 year old growing up in Las Vegas. Two and two. Took his GED so he could graduate from high school early to start the. Went to Southern Nevada. College process to be drafted sooner. He played for a while. He told me this last year. He played for a while for an amateur team that was based in Aurora. He played over in Grand Junction in the Junior College World Series. So well, you know, Plesio Field. Yeah, he ended up getting thrown out of the game, yes, right? His last one, I believe. That's not unusual if you wonder he grows up in Vegas, has been playing for an amateur team out of Aurora. On travel teams, so there are a number of teams that will have a roster that has guys that are out of state guys. And Belial strikes out. Bryce Harper, third time Harper struck out tonight. Two gone. That'll bring up Ian Desmond. They ask for the fastball away. Matt puts it there, 93 miles an hour. That was just a see you later fastball. Desmond swings at the slider and he bounces it foul. Seven runs, ten hits tonight for Washington. The Rockies have been blanked on four hits. Well, you mentioned Asheville a moment ago. They're, uh, they were awarded the 2015 South Atlantic League All Star Game. It's a nice honor. Oh, and two the count on Desmond. He has struck out twice tonight. But six strikeouts for the Rockies pitchers and five of them have been either Harper or Desmond and this one's lined to right Barnes coming on making the catch. Good catch by Brandon Barnes to end the inning two left on in the sixth. we go to the seventh. Washington seven Colorado nothing. Recap put the seventh inning stretch to good use. Sign up for First Bank's free checking at eFirstBank.com. Well, it's been all Washington tonight. The top of their lineups, five for 12, has driven in five and scored six runs. Tough outing for Christian Friedrich, just three and a third. He gives up five runs, five hits. He walked four hitters. And Strasburg's been good. He's been real good through six innings. Drew Stubbs will lead things off for the Rockies in the seventh. Willene Rosario. And Ryan Wheeler to follow.
Stubbs tonight has struck out twice once swinging once looking. Twenty nine year old Robert Andrew Stubbs. Thought Drew was his first name didn't. He? I did originally back when he was with Cincinnati. That pitch was uh, low and in, but Marty Foster called the strike. So again, it's an 0 2 about, count. About I mean, every, Drew. He's, he's had three 0 2 counts tonight. And he goes down swinging. That is strikeout number six for Strasburg. Willie Rosario has been his only problem tonight. Willie, two line singles to right. Good breaking ball for a strike. Says I'm not going to give you a first pitch fastball. Looks like Adam Ottavino will be next. On the ground at third, Zimmerman's got it. Two outs. It wasn't a pretty throw, but effective. Those well, arm slots up a little higher than where we've seen it the last couple of years. But he, it's not he's coming not, out of the hand. Yeah, he's not throwing it with confidence. I just guides it over there. It's like the first three or four throws you you make when you first get to the yard just getting loose. Wheeler a line out and a little squib out in front of the plate. Six on the last fastball. He's 92 pitches in with the score what it is. Got to figure Matt Williams after this inning will probably pull him. Also do up second in the inning. Side two and two also at ninety six. And Strasburg stamps on the bag. Three one that play. A one two three inning in the seventh for Strasburg. Seven nothing Washington.
Alexis look back. Uh, Christian Friedrich was hit hard and walked four guys while he was in three and a third. Jason Worth a couple of doubles. He's driven in three tonight. And then this double down the left field line for Anthony Rendon. That's what greeted Chad Bettis. And Steven Strasburg hasn't given up much. He hasn't walked a batter. He struck out six. And Strasburg has allowed only four singles in the game. That look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus, where luxury has a new address. They're opening Greenwood Village as well as Colorado Springs. Seven runs, ten hits for Washington. Charlie Culberson has come in at third base. And Adam Adovino's on the mound. That's a double switch. Wheeler comes out. Oh, you know, let me correct that. Wheeler's at first base. Didn't notice that. And Morneau's come out of the ball game. Get Just him get, off his feet. Yeah, Justin has been playing a lot, so get him a couple innings off as they look towards tomorrow. See Ryan over at first, but for Adam, trying to get back on track. Just a little bit of time he's been out there. It's been a bit of a rough go. There's still 38 strikeouts. That's the most by the Rockies reliever, and his 40 games are also tied with Rex Brothers for most. 12 holds on the season. One and two on Ramos. And that's sweeping sliders outside. On the ground is short. Rutledge on the move throws to Wheeler one out. Well, get to the ballpark early on Sunday, July 6 is the first 15,000 will receive a Walt Weiss skipper bobblehead gnome. But also on site will be the University of Colorado Health Pink Lifesaver bus. So it's a two for one Rockies giveaway on Sunday, July 6. Well, Strasburg is going to hit here, which indicates he. Pitch the not, eighth inning. Yeah, he had 96 pitches. Maybe he's trying to give a, a little break to the bullpen. Because there is nobody warming up. Two and oh, Strasburg had that double back in the fourth inning. Ended up scoring a run. Barnes has slid over about right where he hit the baseball. And it's three and oh. And a four pitch walk to Strasburg. That's the sixth walk allowed by the Rockies pitching staff tonight. Well, we were, we were talking to Joe West earlier, and he filled us in on that non-ball call and why it wasn't a balk last night. We appreciate that, Joe. Joe, uh, pretty good country music singer, but we also asked him about instant replay and, and what he thought of it. I mean, Joe's been around 36 years now, senior umpire in the game, and he said, "I love it." He said, "It's it's making us all better." In that it helps us with angles, what angles we can utilize based on all the camera angles that indicate, you know, safer out, let's say on a bang bang play. And so they can move their positioning a little bit. And, and I think that's such a, a modest way of looking at it. Instead of being offended that there's Big Brother to, to steal an Orwellian 
term looking over their shoulder. Joe looks at it as a tool to get the everything right and he thinks it's helping the umpires by and large so he he didn't say I like it he said I love it well and for a, a veteran like a Joe West the, the young umpires are going to follow his lead and he says I like it and it's going to make the game and make umpires better I think that's the key thing because we've seen throughout the course of the game you can go back to 85 and, and Don Denkinger and the call at first base you know, with personal experience, I look back at 1996 in the ALCS game one. Tony Tarasco, who's the first base coach here, this is him in right field. Thinks he has it. No, Jeffrey Mayer reaches over the fence. He's arguing with Richie Garcia. If there was instant replay, that call would not have been a home run by Derek Jeter. So I, for one, would have liked to have a replay back in 96. Because I, I guarantee you, that Orioles won the first game. They're going to win that game going back to, to Baltimore. It's a different story. They, you know. Sure it is. I look at it. <laughs> missed out on an opportunity for a World Series ring. I understand. And that misses, so another walk. It's unlike Adam. Back to back walks. And Rendon will come up. And Jim Wright, how many times has Jim had to go to the mound tonight? Well, they're going to have to water that area a little extra more, maybe throw down some grass seed because he's gone out there quite a few times. Joe's a funny guy. i tell you another story he, he shared tonight. I asked him, I said, all right, what's the funniest thing that's happened with managers coming out and then, you know, the formality of turning around and waiting when to he, get the thumb up or thumb down from the, uh, you know, from the bench coach. And he said, Mike Sosha came out and, the, and he got out there and he said, I hate this as he's looking at his bench coach. And uh, Joe said, you hate this as much as you've been coming out here. You'd have thought you'd lost some weight. <laughs> yeah, he's, He's kidding, Mike, who's a good yeah. friend. But. And that's a strike on Rendon. It's kind of like that, that Jeopardy music playing while the umpires are out there talking to the managers while they're waiting. To, yeah. What do you want to do? Ground ball to third. And Rockies won't be able to turn it over. And Doan got up the line. Good feed from Culberson, though, to DJ LeMahieu. Two outs. Runners at first and third for Jason Worth. Time for tonight's T Mobile game changer. Jason Worth in the first inning with two on smokes a double down the left field line and that got Washington off to a quick two nothing start and the way Strasburg is pitched would make things difficult and then he doubled in another run a little bit later on in the ball game Worth has been a game changer and he takes a slider for a strike. Another slider for a strike. Vino goes fastball up and it's bounced to second. And that's all in the inning for Washington. A couple of men left to board. 7 0 Nationals as we go to the eighth. Barnes will lead off for Colorado.
T fan photo of the game. And let's see what we have in store tonight. Oh, these are Rockies fans here at Nationals Park. That's pretty neat. And they got themselves out on the field. Well done. Tweet your photo to hashtag COFanPhoto for an opportunity to be seen just like this in a game. Coming up, brought to you by AT&T. Some changes for Washington. Ryan Zimmerman crosses uh, from one corner to the other. He's now at first base. LaRoche has come out of the ball game. Rendon goes to third. And Washington has inserted Kevin Franson in the game. Strasburg remains out there. Barnes 0 for 2 tonight against Strasburg, and Strasburg is ahead 0 and 1. Strasburg came in with a 1 and 2 record against the Rockies. Even though he had a 2.84 ERA, this is his fourth career start against Colorado. Well, last time he faced the Rocks uh, a little over a year ago here in D.C., seven innings in that game, one run allowed. And he strikes out Barnes. That's his seventh punch out. That'll bring up LeMay here. Pitch number 100 for Strasburg five times this season. He's gone above 100 pitches, and the high was 114. DJ's got a six game hitting streak on the line. Two strike count. Strasburg in his career when he gets three or more runs of support is 37 and four. Well, that's an impressive number just. Shows you why he was drafted number one overall. DJ drives this ball to left center field and deep and gone. DJ LeMahieu. With a whopper of a home run. His third of the year. And that breaks up the shutout. And it's seven to one. And it extends DJ's hitting streak. Yeah, he turned on that. He stayed back on the curveball. This had the loud sound. He goes down and gets it inside. He knew it when he hit it. Boy, the back leg drive. Everything coiling and uncoiling at the right time. The ball flight. You can see the left fielder, Harper. He stops and says, now I have no chance. Guess I had to buy a ticket and go out into the outfit stands. As we said earlier, if you hit a home run here, you've earned it. Well, and where he hit that ball, it was... In the 390 400 foot range in a heavy, heavy air. One and two on Culberson.
uh, he went around. Strike at number eight. Craig Stammen you saw standing in the bullpen for the Nationals, so it looks like he'll uh, pitch the ninth inning. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at root sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more. Dickerson 0 for 3. Fly ball to center. And he's grounded out once to first and once to second. Dickerson didn't start yesterday. Came in as a defensive replacement. Won one for two. A 367 against righties. That's down. Yeah, he came in 51 for 139. Nationals trying to keep pace with the Braves. They're up in the eighth inning at Turner Field 5 4 against the Mets. Low. Marlins in that race. They're tied with Philadelphia also in the NL East at 4 4 in the ninth. Bird has hit his 16th for Philadelphia. I want to get some change of address labels going. Yeah, that's a name <laughs> that's uh, popping up as that's ball four. Uh, for a veteran guy that may be available, he moved last year. And Matt Williams is going to go take the baseball from Steven Strasburg. He's reached, reached uh, an arbitrary pitch limit. And he's going to hear it from the crowd as he walks off. Seven and two thirds. Hundred and ten pitches. That's his first walk of the night. Steven Strasburg was terrific tonight. In fact, he's our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Strasburg with eight strikeouts and seven and two thirds, just one walk. That was the last hitter he faced. And he didn't give up a run until a couple minutes ago, and DJ LeMay, who took him deep. Craig Stammen in, and his first pitch is. A strike on Rutledge. Rutledge a single back in the sixth inning. One for three tonight against Strasburg. League hitting just 219 against Craig Stammen. Risley came up and was a starter, but he's been better as a reliever in the last two or three innings or two or three years. Performance hitting 219 against Stammen. With six walks in 41 in the third inning. 
He's a drop down sidearm slinger from the right side, 91 miles an hour, averaging on the fastball. Bounce foul. Look at that shot of Strasburg a moment ago. Looked like he was kind of playing with a blister or something on his thumb. Yeah, that would, I mean, it did look that way, didn't it? Yeah. That would surprise me because it wouldn't have just cropped up, you'd think, in the eighth inning after, you know, close to 100 pitches. He, he finished with 110. And if he had it going in the sixth or the seventh, they would have, they would have pulled him out yeah. of there. Yeah, I'm not going to let it get any worse. He keeps playing with his right thumb. Oh, there's some sort of irritation yeah. there. You're going to get that callus on that on the inside of your thumb from throwing a baseball. Well, and the curveball, too, because that'll generate. That's where it, when it comes off your thumb, the torque. Maybe some extra moisture tonight. Cause some friction. Two and two on Rutledge. Dickerson is at first. He just walked. Inside three and two. Arizona had a two nothing lead going to the ninth inning. Tonight in Pittsburgh. And the Pirates rallied for three runs against Miley and then Addison Reed to win the game 3 2. Ball four. Okay. I think that hurts quite as bad as that walk off grand slam that the Tigers had last night. Charlie Blackman, yeah, that was. You want to give up a walk off slam. Charlie Blackman will pinch hit. It's the pitcher spot because Justin Morneau left the game two innings back. With the score lopsided. Morneau improved his hitting streak to seven games with a first inning single. Briere got the win in that ball game for the Pirates. He, of course, just came from the Angels in the Jason Grilly deal. Pirates have made a little bit of a move. They're 43 and 40 now. The Mayhew a home run. Now two on and two outs for Blackman. The 0-1 and a good pitch. Tailed off the plate. It's 0 2. Jose Batista returned to the Blue Jays lineup. He captain the American League home run derby team. And he promptly hit his 16th. He'd be looking at a couple angels. One in particular, Trout at his 19th tonight. Old reliable Albert Kuholtz is 17th. Angels beat the White Sox 8 4. This is on the ground a second. Kevin Franson on the first. Rockies got a run. Long solo home run for DJ LeMay, who is third of the year. 7 1 Nats.
link to what's next. Here's a pitching matchup tomorrow in the series finale. Tyler Matvick, who threw the ball very well his last time out. He's uh, thrown the ball very well. In fact, his uh, first three starts. He'll be opposed by six foot eight inch Doug Fister, the former Detroit Tiger, who's fashioned a six and two record with a 2.83 ERA. That's a pitch matchup tomorrow. We're on an hour earlier tomorrow. Uh, in the afternoon, back home in the Mountain Time Zone, it's a six o'clock start here, which means 5:30 with the pregame show, 3:30 back home. Rex Brothers will throw the bottom of the eighth inning. He's trying to get Rex some work. 27th of June, third of an inning, pretty quick work, 10 pitches. Ground ball to short. And a good look at play by Rutledge. Nice He's made a plays. couple of really nice plays. As Francis retired. One out, Ryan Zimmerman will come up. Let's take a look at our subway in game box for Washington. They've accumulated 10 hits tonight, and everybody save Ian Desmond. Has a knock. Ryan Zimmerman is two for two. He had three hits last night. He's had a big series so far. Takes a strike. And Rex misses there. One ball, one strike. Nationals had a very good June. They went 17 and 11. And one of the reasons the Nationals won a lot more than they lost, in addition to the great pitching they've been getting, they played great defense. Last three and a half weeks of June, just three errors covering last 24 games for Matt Williams' team. They've given up a bunch of unearned runs the first two months of the season. That cleaned up. They just gave up two earned runs, uh, unearned runs. That's a team record for a month. They had, as you said, only two unearned runs in the month of June. Everybody remembers Matt Williams and his power and how he could hit, but he was a pretty slick fielding third baseman. Converted shortstop. Right field on the line. Barnes is there. Two outs. One of the things I'll always remember about Matt Williams is to keep his uh, front shoulder closed. He had the habit of, of literally licking his, his uniform right on the jersey. shoulder, his jersey. Remind him to tuck his chin to that left shoulder. And Jim Tomey used to, to point the bat to the pitcher so he didn't get locked up. Everybody does a little something. There's, there's idiosyncrasies for everybody. Bryce Harper single back in the fourth inning. Other than that, he has produced three strikeouts. I'd love to come to the ballpark and read the Washington Post. <laughs> Two strikes on Harper. The Ford Strike Zone is powered by Ford SUVs. The versatility you need and the FPGs and quality you deserve. It's the smarter way to get their Ford go further. On the ground, jam shot to first. Wheeler flips to Brothers. Good inning for Rex. We'll go to the ninth. The National 7 and the Rockies 1. Back 
to Nationals Park after this. Nation's capital, always busy, always things to do. Unfortunately, the Rockies have struggled here. They lost seven to three last night. They're down seven to one here at the top of the ninth inning. Let's get it back to Denver. A preview of what's to come afterward on the Toyota Post Game Show. Here's Jenny. All right, Jenny, in the ninth inning, Drew Stubbs will lead things off against Craig Stammen. Drew three uh, at bats, three strikeouts against Steven Strasburg, but he strikes out a lot of guys. In fact, Strasburg leading the National League in punch outs. He produced eight this evening. A little over ten and a half strikeouts per nine innings for Strasburg. How about Nelson Cruz, Huey? The Orioles beat the Rangers 8-3 to tonight. He had his 26th home run. And you know it's a little extra sweet when it's against the Rangers. Absolutely. A team that let you go. Let you walk. Two-strike count on Drew. That's a perfect, that ballpark's a perfect fit for him. I'm talking about Camden Yards. In the air down the right field line. And, ooh, oh, man, that's a... Terrific catch. And you wonder about the arm. Nate McLeod is now in the ball game. He's more known more for being able to play center field. Jumps up. Ow, those are the ones you hurt your shoulder, your elbow. So many things can happen, even with the padding. Yeah, he's lucky that the arm wasn't more extended over Fully, that. Yes. Over that railing, and he appears to be okay. One out, Stubbs. The first out, and here's Willeen. Willeen, two for three. The only Rocky with the multiple hits tonight against Strasburg. Rockies have just five hits this evening. DJ hit a home run last inning to provide the Rockies with their lone run. A reminder, if you have windshield damage, call SafeLight at 303-287-5000, or you can find them on the Internet at SafeLight.com. And 26 home runs in this day and age. Everything trending toward the pitcher the last uh, several years, Huey. On pace to hit in the neighborhood of 50. That's a boatload. Well, and then coming off the suspension that he had last year, the 50 game suspension. Yeah. He, I'm sure there was a, a lot of teams out there questioning could he do that again where he where he hit the home runs with the power prior to his suspension. And 
than Rosario's got. Two gone in the ninth, and Ryan Wheeler will come up. And look, one other note on, on Nelson Cruz. Do you remember when Milwaukee, before the trade deadline in 06, made that big deal for Francisco Cordero, Kevin Mench, Lance Nix, yes. and, and Julian Cordero, who was a minor leaguer? Mm -hmm. Well, they traded Carlos Lee. That was the big prize, or so the Rangers thought. Yes. Nelson Cruz was a minor leaguer also in that deal. Little did they know that Cruz would end up being the most impactful guy of the whole well, trade well, and well, probably the least known at the time. But that's where you have to have all your scouting reports. You look them up. You say, well, who's going to be the guy, do you think? And the scouts put their heads together and say, well, see if we can get this guy included in the trade. And Nelson Cruz was one of those players. Four pitch walk to Wheeler. So Brandon Barnes will get another turn. Brandon's 0 for 3. The middle and it's gloved there at second by France and he runs to the bag and that's it for tonight's ball game as the Rockies fall seven to one to Washington. Steven Strasburg gets the victory, improves to seven and six, and Christian Friedrich takes the loss. Christian is now 0 and 3. The Nationals improve to 45 and 38, seven games above 500. The Rockies fall to 36 and 48. 7-1 the final. Tyler Matzik will try to salvage a victory for the Rockies here in our nation's capital tomorrow. We'll go to break when we come back to Toyota Postgame Show.